this Miss Designer tutorial. In this how-to video, I will show you some tips and tricks to add some amazing effects to your app user interface to make it absolutely unique. In my first tip, I want to demonstrate how to create status buttons that switch the button background image and the icon image at the same time. My second tip is about securing pages and buttons with passwords. And I will show you how to open an external app, for example, Zonos, Philips U, or Nanoleaf app via a VisDesigner button. And finally, you will learn how to set up an inactivity action for a remote. Okay, let's get started. First, let me show you what I have prepared for you. What you see in the VisDesigner desktop application is an iPad remote based on a room navigation. It consists of an index page, index page with several hexagon room buttons. This one, this one, this one. To navigate to the room pages over here. To create this layout, I use the carbon skin and the color style orange thin. Okay, let me open the preview to show you how it works. Just click on living room and then the living room page opens. Because this is just an example, only the living room page is filled with content. All the other room pages are empty, just click back, sleeping room, and so on, and navy kitchen. It's just as an example. Additionally, there is a pop-up, this one, to arm and disarm the alarm. A pop-up, which will be opened by a button on the index page, this button, to arm or disarm the system. Show you in the preview. preview just click the button and the up to arm or disarm opens. More on this later. Back to our tips. First, I want to explain how to create a status button that switches the button background image and the icon image at the same time. Maybe some of you have asked yourself how to do that since the normal status buttons only switch the icon and not the button background, depending on the device state. Well, it's pretty easy to get that done if you use a simple workaround. I want to demonstrate this with a toggle button that switches both background and icon image to control the floor light in the living room. Okay, so I open the living room page. Here's uh, the area for the floor lamp. And here I want to add a toggle button. Because a button element doesn't support this use case, it is necessary to add an image element as a second layer for the icon visualization. This means that the button element as the lower layer is responsible for the execution of the action and the display of the status of the button background. And the image element as the upper layer is responsible for the display of the state icon. Well, let's do it. In the first step, we use a button element and drag it here, the floor lamp area and assign action for the light. Execute command, living room, canvas, okay, and toggle. And assign the status as well, canvas power. Okay. Now you have to create a status rule for this button element to display the different button background images. 
In order to visualize the state, I use button background images that look as if they are lit when switched on. Okay, status rules. Here you can create the status rule, but for this example, I already did it. I created status rules, switch button background for this purpose. I'll show you for the off value, I have a gray button as well as for the undefined default value. And for the value on, I have the orange button image. And assign the status rule to this element. Remove the background image because only the icon image will show the state. And now you have a button element with different images for different states. For more details about working with status rules, please check our tutorial on this topic. In the next step, we use an image element to display the icon. Image element, just place it above of the button element, not beneath, but above. Make sure that the icon is on a higher level so that the button elements not in the foreground, but in the background. Um, you can do that in the properties with the layer buttons, just on the highest layer level. So this is in the foreground. Just place it in the middle. And now assign the device, living room canvas, power, yes. And because I don't want to use one of the standard status graphics, like these ones, not in orange as well. Um, so I have to create, again, a status rule for this purpose, to have an individual status visualization. Click on status rules. And again, I did it already. So I created this one, this status rule, switch lamp icon just to explain what I did. For the value off, I selected a gray floor lamp icon for the value on uh, an orange floor lamp icon. And for the status undefined and default gray icons as well. Just assign the status rule to the image element. Well, that's all. a little bit smaller and position it center to the background and that's it. As you've seen, by using multiple elements, for example, buttons and our images that are positioned over each other in different layers, you have many options to create unique button visualizations. I can show you the result in the mobile app. Just Open the living room page, click on lamp button, and you see both switches, the background and the icon image. So much for this tip. In my second tip, I want to demonstrate how easy it is to secure pages and buttons with passwords to protect critical functions or areas in the Viz Designer. So let's go back to the index page and protect the arming and disarming of the alarm system with a password. Remember, this button opens the pop-up and on the pop-up, there are the arming and disarming buttons. Now you have two options to generate a password protection. Either you can protect the whole pop-up if you add a password protection to the opening button, or you can protect the execution buttons on the pop-up itself, these two buttons. For this example, I will set a password for the opening 
button. So the whole pop-up will not open until the password has been entered. So click button element, go to the properties, advanced options, and click on set password. Here you can enter the password and the short message with a reminder note to remember the password. So you can enter the example is apply. And the name of the teacher is teacher. Apply. And that's it. Now this button is password protected. Let's have a look at the preview. In this page, click on the button and you see this is a short note. And only if you enter the password, the pop-up will open. Oh, wrong. Just again. Only if you enter the right password, the pop-up will open to arm or disarm the settings. So your critical functions like alarm system are password protected. Of course, you can also protect pages, not only buttons, but pages. Um, page. Click in the background of the page. And here's also the password option. So you can, if you navigate to this page, it will only open if you enter the password, the right password. Well, so much to password protection. Let's move forward to tip number three. Sometimes it's helpful to use the original manufacturer app because it provides some additional functions like Sonos, Philips, U, Nandif, and others. To simplify the opening process of the third-party app, you can switch to the app directly from the this designer or the button element. As an example, I will add a button on the living room page to open the Philips U app. This is ceiling lamp. And here I will add a new button element. Delete the icon. Copy paste the text element, just enter UE, simple example. And now again, select the button element and assign the action to open the Philips U original app. Therefore, you have to select the action, not execute command, but in that case, send HTTP request. And in the field set URL, you have to enter a special term. This is app name, column, double slash. For Philips U, it is UE2, don't ask me why two, column, double slash to open the Philips U app. For Sonos, it would be Sonos, colon, double slash, and so on. Apply, and now the HTTP request is assigned to this button. That's it. Now this button will open the Philips U app from the Viz Designer app. Just let me show you. U button and we switch directly from the Business Designer app to the Philips U app. Well, last but not least, 
I want to show you where you can set an inactivity action for a remote. Why do you need that? And what does that mean? So it means you can define an action which will be executed after a defined period of inactivity. So for example, you can switch to the index page after a time period of three minutes or so. Okay, how you can do this? Just open the main menu, remotes, then global settings, and here the inactivity tab. Just enter five or three minutes or whatever you like and assign an action. You can execute a command if you like. You can start a screensaver or you can switch to a page. We want to switch to the index page. Apply, three minutes, switch page to the index page. Again, apply. And now for this remote, after a period of three minutes, of inactivity, there will be an automatic switch to the index page. All right, that's it for now with this tutorial. As you have seen, the Viz Designer is a powerful tool with many features to make your app user interface as individual as you are. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun using our amazing Viz Designer. Bye bye.